Hey guys, so for those of you who have been watching this channel for any length of time will know that there is a series I run called Battle of the Browsers where I talk about mostly Mozilla Firefox and Google Chrome but also other browsers and how they match up against each other when it comes to surfing the World Wide Web. And today I bring you Web, a new contestant in the field. This is also known as the Epiphany Browser. It is often seen as the default GNOME browser. Uh, it is to GNOME what Conqueror is to KDE. And I've been playing around with it um, for the past few days and I really wanted to do a video showing uh, what it can do and what it's all about because at least in my opinion, it has come a really long way even in the past few years. So a little bit of technical background about it. As you can see here, it's version 3.20.2 powered by WebKit 2.12.3. Um, I've also got the Wikipedia page up here. It's uh, released under the GNU General Public License version 2 or later. So it's a nice open source browser. This is what it looks like in its uh, GTK3 interface. I think it looks really nice. This was the first thing that 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 um, that, that really sort of captured me. Um, so this is just the Wikipedia page. I bring it up because just to let you know that the latest stable release was 34 days ago. So it's certainly very current in that regard. They're always constantly working on it. It's written in C with GTK Plus. Its operating systems are Linux and BSD. But there are a few other things about this browser that really spurred me to make this video. Specifically, that it has a few technical aspects that are. Uh, so, shall we say sort of sort of lesser known in the Linux world? Uh, most specifically is that each of the browsing tabs are in their own process, uh, in a very similar way to how Chromium and Google Chrome browser do their tabs. And this is great for a number of ways. Uh, we are experiencing a World Wide Web these days with, with a growing amount of JavaScript for uh, an increasing um, degree of frivolity. And what I mean by that is we're seeing websites use JavaScript to do fancy layouts for websites when they don't really need to. Um, but this can also put a greater strain on computers, particularly lower end, lower end hardware or older computers, uh, having to run all this JavaScript. Um, so you often find yourself uh, with particular web apps uh, often sort of struggling to um, to really find them usable simply because they just use so much JavaScript. And I've even uh, surfed like news websites and um, and, and you know websites with sort of like articles and, and industry magazine websites and those kind of things that just load their page layout with JavaScript and it completely. Um, even on reasonably fast computers, on reasonably fast browsers, you can see the performance impact. So it must be particularly, um, particularly jarring for uh, for lower end hardware as well, which I often work with, and it is. So um, it's also nice from a technical standpoint to have a browser that is built specifically for Linux. We look at Chromium and Chrome. We look at Mozilla and Firefox. And we do see that they do cater much more to the Windows crowd than they do to the Linux crowd, and that makes a whole bunch of sense. The Windows crowd is infinitely bigger than the Linux crowd, and it, and they are going to definitely put a lot more time and effort into making sure that Mozilla and Chrome work better on Windows because they just have such larger communities. So having a browser that's built specifically for Linux allows them to focus on Linux. Uh, what you know, what about Linux can 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 make the browser specifically better? They can integrate it with GTK3. They can keep it up to date because, of course, we've seen Mozilla Firefox um, stay in the GTK2 toolkit for quite some time, much longer than it really needed to be if it was that Linux uh, centric, which it isn't. So. So it is nice to have a very specific browser, almost for a very specific desktop. I mean, there are a lot of people that consider this uh, to be the official um, GNOME browser. Now, I don't know whether or not it is. I mean, it is on the uh, the GNOME wiki up here. Um, but um, most of the distributions that I've uh, showcased and that I've seen, that I've experienced, have usually Firefox as the main browser. Sometimes Chromium, but it's usually almost always Firefox. I think Elementary OS have Midori, and I've also been playing a little bit with that, so there might be a video coming where I talk a little bit more about Midori. So, as you can see from a technical standpoint, you know, it's, it, it's specifically for Linux, it's on GTK3, it has separate processes for its tabs, it has a nice layout as well. I mean, if you wanted to say put in the URL, you just click at the top and, and the URL will, bar would appear. This gives you a lot of screen real estate, this takes a very 
little space in terms of your overall desktop. So if you, you know, this is again one of the things that, that strike me. The layout is of course very easy to use. You've probably already worked out what half the buttons does. This is the Epiphany menu, so you can go into incognito mode, reopen, close tabs, preferences, yada yada, back, forward, reload, open a new tab. It's all really as simple as that. Um, and then here's yeah some screenshots um, in another desktop. And there's some build instructions. So Epiphany slash web comes in just about any distribution of Linux um, that you seem to, you, that, you, that you're running. Most likely, any distribution like you know Ubuntu, Arch, Red Hat, it'll be in the repositories. It's on every Linux distribution that I've uh, that I've ever showcased and tried out. Maybe some of the smaller ones like um, like Puppy might not necessarily include it. Although I suspect that there's a strong chance that it might be in the repos there somewhere. So. Um, if we go to the preferences, so let, what what can this browser do uh, in terms of customizability? Well, this is the interesting thing. Of course, you can choose between only three search engines here. I haven't worked out how to add additional search engines, if that's at all possible. In all fairness, between Google, DuckDuckGo, and Bing, you should be able to find one that you're reasonably comfortable with. DuckDuckGo is a privacy-respecting privacy search engine, uh, very similar to, to Google in essence. Uh, a very good company as well. They're very big in the open source world. So... Um, so DuckDuckGo would be my choice. Uh, you can remember tabs from startup. You can allow pop-up windows or disallow them. You can allow adverts, so it comes with a built-in ad blocker, which is particularly interesting. And you can enable plugins. Enabling pl plugins are, are things like Java uh, and Flash, and I, I generally disable them, especially with Epiphany. Um, just it's simply just to give it a, um, as much speed as possible. Um, but also nowadays, I find that it's not necessarily needed. Um, if I go on to say even hitbox.tv and watch them live streaming there, um, you don't need plugins to do that because it's all HTML5 um, compatible. So it's not running off of a plugin, which is really interesting and, and quite an exciting aspect to the old HTML5 um, live streaming, uh, which is, is basically now becoming the de facto live streaming platform, whereas it used to be Flash. So I'm particularly delighted about that. You can of course set your system fonts, you can do this with any browser, and you've got language options here. Privacy. So this doesn't give you the world of privacy options. This is perhaps one of the big negatives about it. Uh, with cookies you can um, select how and when you accept cookies, so you can choose to never accept them, only from sites you want or always accept them, and you can manage the cookies that you have. Uh, you can tell sites that you do not want to be tracked. This is only a request, this doesn't actually uh, in any way put you incognito. It does have a built-in password manager. I tend to stay away from these. Um, the Firefox one, I, as I understand it, is pretty good, and I think the Google one is okay. I think they... But um, feel free to, to add your opinions on that in the description below if you happen to have... Uh, if you happen to have a more informed opinion than I do, which many of you most certainly do. Um, and then you can just clear the personal data there. It it gives you it's very small there's very small amount of options, which in a way is quite good because it allows the end user to know exactly what's activated and exactly what's not. You go into the Google settings and you look down a long page of privacy settings. Yes, it's very inclusive. Yes, you can do a lot more with it, and of course as well with Firefox. But it's sometimes um, difficult to keep an eye on all those different factors at play when you've just got a few solid uh, choices. You sort of know what's what and you know your level of security. That being said, though, there are no options to, for example, block JavaScript uh, or manipulate, you know, sort of choose which websites allow JavaScript. Um, it just seems to be it just seems to be a very straightforward, minimalist approach uh, where it doesn't give you the world of options, but in a way that makes it more user friendly. It makes it more lightweight. Um, and again, it's got the client side decorations, which are, are growing on me. I used to be a little bit more skeptical of client-side decorations back in the day. I thought that Windows might lose their definition. With with traditional Windows, I like the title bar. You can just grab it and move it around. <clears throat> but um, with client-side decorations, I thought that that might, you know, um, be a little bit more difficult to manage the Windows. However, this is a perfect implementation of it, and I'm certainly coming around to the idea of client-side decorations. So, uh, so there's that. Um, so basically, the, the the this is a browser which I definitely recommend at least taking a look at. Uh, however, it's not the most privacy centric privacy centric browser out there. Uh, it's a pretty standard uh, browser that just works pretty well. 
I've had a few websites crash as a result of maybe too much JavaScript or bad coding, and I've certainly been um, sort of testing it from that department. One of the benefits of this, and one of the benefits of having separate processes for each tab, is that when I did visit a website with such bad code in it that it crashed, it only crashed that one tab. Uh, whereas with with a browser like Firefox that loads everything from one process, the entire browser crashed, whereas only the tab here crashed, which is um, which is definitely something that I appreciate in a browser. And I also understand, of course, it's very difficult to implement, which is why Firefox are intending to implement it, but it's taken them what seems at this point now to be years. Um, and it is nice. And, and I think this is where I see the real advantage of having a Linux-centric browser is that it, it was a lot, it seemed at least, to be a lot easier for them to put in things like separate processes for tabs because it was Linux centric, whereas doing this across uh, across multiple platforms and multiple operating systems seems to be infinitely more uh, difficult when it comes to how, F how Mozilla and Firefox have done it. I don't have any inside information or, or, or even that knowledgeable about it, but that's my sort of um, conjective guess, as it were, I guess, or at least an educated guess. So I really do like this browser. Um, it definitely suffers in terms of lack of customizability. So you can't move any of these buttons around. Uh, I also dislike the fact that the bookmarks, there is like, the, the, it would be great if there was a bookmark button up here on the top, maybe like right next to the preferences button here. But you don't, you have to click the preferences and then you have to go all the way down to bookmarks, which is a little bit um, convoluted. It's not the end of the world, it's certainly not a deal breaker for me. However, uh, even though the bookmarks menu is, is a little bit of a convoluted process to find, if you open up a new tab you do get the speed dial um, and then you've got some of your more commonly recent, recently visited sites um, sort of presented to you. So there is that, it's not necessarily um, all bad there. Um, I think the big, uh, the big, the biggest negative factor is like the lack of plugins and the lack of customizability. And I would suspect the lack of customizability is uh, by design, it's to make it a bit more user friendly, it's to fit in with the new sort of GNOME desktop, um, whereas there isn't that much customizability, but that's really as a, um, a feature for user friendliness. And I can understand that, and if you want to, you know, and, and, and if GNOME's job is to make Linux user friendly, then have at it. I'll be, you know, I'll be happy with my XFCE, which is a little more customizable, you know, and, and a little bit more for, for traditional Linux users. But if you want GNOME to be the flagship of Linux, I mean, it looks nice, it, it, you know, I quite like it. It is a bit of a hardware bloke, but, um, you know, I have no problem with um, with them trying to make things a little bit more easier to understand from a, from a new user perspective. And I think Epiphany is a good browser that kind of reflects that philosophy. So it's simple, it's straightforward, it's easy to use, it's fast, uh, it has multiple processes, um, which is the, the only browser that I know that can do this apart from Google. So if you want to stay away from like Google Chrome or Chromium, uh, and you like having a nice stable browser, this could very well be something you want. But the lack of plugins and the lack of, lack of customizability are going to disappoint a number of users. So that's really, to me, what it comes down for, is that it's... Um, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fast, lean, stable browser that looks really nice and behaves really nicely. However, it does lack customizability. It isn't the most private uh, browser and um, and it doesn't really have that much in the way of plugins. But overall, I've got to say, this is a browser that's certainly tweaking my interest. Especially running on the Linux desktop, the lack of plugins isn't a massive issue for me because there are so many desktop uh, applications that can be used for things like print screening and 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 all that kind of stuff so you know there's a lot of stuff that doesn't necessarily need to happen within the browser and in fact in some ways is more stable and customizable if it isn't uh, but this just takes the browser and it gives you just that unlike of course Chrome and, and Mozilla Firefox which are effectively turning the web browser into a, a sort of almost like an, an, a container or an operating system within its within it within another operating system okay so this has been the web web browser otherwise known as epiphany uh, sometimes known of course as the the gnome 3 browser um, I really like it it's minimalist it behaves really nicely I like the separate processes for separate tabs I dislike that it's perhaps not the most, uh, you know, it's not the most accommodating to private browsing uh, and that it lacks plugins and other sort of customizable options there by, by quite a stretch, almost as if it isn't uh, is specifically, you know, catering to people that, that want to stay away from, from complicated customization options. So 
Certainly one that I'm going to be giving a try further into the future. I'm going to give it a try to find out whether or not I can I can sort of adapt with the, the differences, deal with the changes. Uh, but it is certainly something that I'd like to see go from strength to strength, if for no other reason than it is a browser specifically designed for Linux, which um, we see very little praise for these days. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. And if there's another open source browser you would like me to check out, uh, feel free to let me know, of course, in the comments section. Thanks very much for watching. That's about it from me today. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.